while we were picking beans, Matt saw a little terrapin. He's, or she's buried up there. I guess she's laying some eggs. Got her a little place picked out. It's kind of a weird place, but we'll just leave her alone and let her be. Matt and I are out picking beans this morning, but our rattlesnake beans may have finally give out on us. They've been so good all, all summer long, but we didn't get not even about a quarter of a five gallon bucket. There are a lot of blooms though, so we'll leave them. They'll produce at least a few more, but I don't know, our cannon may be over for the year. So we're back here in the back picking some. This variety, I have one of them, Matt. This is the Cade's Cove greasy bean that we got from Debbie at Bryson Farm Supply. But they don't look very greasy. I mean, they don't have that sheen that's usually on greasy beans. There's lots of different varieties of them. But all of them have like, looks like someone's just took a little bit of oil and rubbed it across the top of the hull. And these don't really look like that, do they? Mm -mm. Kind of a short bean, but really full. The bean inside it, let's look at one of them. Matt said we're going to get enough to eat, not enough to can. They said we're going to have a whole lot of shellies inside them. Of course, I dropped that one. So what that means, shellies see the ones I dropped. Shelly just means when the uh, the hull has got so tough that you really can't eat it anymore but you can shell out the insides and just cook them fresh. Most of the time that's probably my favorite green beans is when there's some hulls but there's some just lots of shellies. It's what Matt likes too yeah, I think. It is. And a lot of times we'll can them like that too, if the towards the end of the season. Some of our la our last canning that we did, there was a couple of jars like that that had a lot of big shellies in them, and then some hulls. So really good eating though. Matt's moved down to the next section, and that's where we have. This is a real pretty bean. Someone a subscriber shared with us last year, and it, it was passed down in his family, and so he called it Grammy Bean because it was his grandmother's that had passed it down to his family, of course. And it's a really prolific, really pretty bean. And we're trying to be really mindful this year of trying to save seed from all the different ones that we've grown. We probably won't save the rattlesnake beans because we have several of those. We still have some. But this Cades Cove one, especially those Debbie give us, but even this one. And then we had also almost lost our seed to the Yance bean, which is a bush bean. That's a really old bean from here in Cherokee County where we live. Uh, Matt's friend, Brian Lambert, he shared it with us many, many years ago, and we've about let it get away from us. So we're all the yachts bean seed we're going to save this year, and we're some of it's ready right now to actually harvest and let it lay out and dry. But we've had so much rain this past week. We even had rain this morning, so we're going to wait for some sunshine to come out and dry them on the vine at least once more, and then try to harvest them, and then we'll lay them out and let them finish curing probably on the front porch. How many do we end up with now with the addition of these? Yeah, about three-fourths of a About three-fourths of a bucket. So that's plenty enough for us to have a mess of beans and for Granny to have a mess. I can eat that before dark. Oh, you can't. You're going to have to get in there and get started cooking it before dark. You better quit right now and go start it. That's a good idea. I'll quit and go in where it's cool. No, you can't leave me. we got a few more things to do. We need to pick some tomatoes and... Well, I hope we're going to tear out some places where some of our things are ready now to be pulled out and then we can prepare those places to plant some fall things. Matt's getting some tomatoes and I found a couple of apples that had fallen, fallen off the tree. I've been waiting all summer to see this pink calendula. Isn't it pretty? It's finely blooming. That one looks more yellowy than it does pink. but still really pretty. I'll have to wait and see what this one looks like. Maybe it'll be even pinker. It's really pretty though. 
This is the calendula that we usually grow. You can see it's yellow, really pretty yellow. It's beautiful. Next year, I need to plant the yellow with the pink. I think that would be lovely. Well, we cleaned up a little bit. It was hard to know what to do. We took out some of the marigolds and some of the um, borage and things like that that was just played out and was dying back in the two beds where our cucumbers are. But there were so many cucumbers that were about that big that we didn't want to tear them all out. So then we had to regroup and think about where else we could put our fall things. And we'll probably try to do some succession of the fall ones, but we want to just plant something today just so we'll have something done. So in case nothing else gets planted, at least we'll have a few things. We had to go in and feed Matt because he come unfed. So he's had a tomato sandwich, so now he's happy. But one thing we knew we were going to change next year is these grow bags alongside the greenhouse. We've had tomatoes in them the last two years, maybe three years. And it just gets really awkward. They don't do that great. And then they flop over into the walkway where you're trying to get the tomatoes out of this bed here. And it just never has worked out. So we'd already decided that we were not going to do tomatoes there next year. Uh, we we're going to try to do something else there. Maybe put a long narrow bed or even if we left the grow bags We're just not going to do tomatoes in them So we pulled all that wire that Matt had fixed for so the to hold the tomatoes in we didn't have cattle panels there We had Matt had made like a kind of enclosed them with wire so that when the tomatoes grew up They had something to support them Matt took all that down and we put another layer of compost on those bags and we're just gonna plant in it. We're gonna plant some of the stuff in it. So we're gonna plant some kale. I've got a few different kinds of kale, but to me it's all kale. We're gonna plant some turnips, and I think we're gonna try those in the bags and see how that does. This year when we planted our beets in the spring, I, had, I grew exactly one beet out of all the ones I planted. I typically don't plant them in the fall at all, but I'm just gonna say what the heck and, and try some and see what happens. And then on, up on the bank on one of the beds that we had tore out about a week ago, we tore the cucumbers up there out because they were just been decimated by the squash beetle. We put some diatomaceous earth up there, which Matt says he doesn't think it does any good whatsoever. But we did put some. Anyway, it's been empty for now over a week. So we may go up there and plant some. We're going to put some mustard greens. Someone shared some mustard green seeds with me. And then we may put some more either turnips up there or rutabagas. We've tried to grow rutabagas for the past two or three years. Never accomplished it. The first, I think every year something's ate them. The first year I think it was rabbits or something like that. Last year the deer mowed down our all of our fall things. So I hope that don't happen happen again this year. Maybe this will help putting it right here too though. I have to ask Matt that. Do they not like narrow places? It don't, it don't matter, he says, so forget that. Anyway, that's what we're going to do now. So we got that stuff planted. Now it's beginning to rain on us, but we're going to try to hurry and plant this one bed. These mustard seeds come from Wayne Gordon, Rabin Gap, so just over the mountain from us. And they brought them to me at one of the book signings. So I'm gonna, we're gonna plant some of them in this bed here. Stop right there and draw me a line. It ain't gonna rain us out, is it? Looks like it might. Maybe I can hurry up and get them covered. Be good on the seeds we just planted. Mm -hmm. So we got the mustard greens planted and it quit raining. So hopefully we can, we're gonna put rutabagas in this other end. Maybe they'll come up.
I'm afraid we're gonna get wet. The top fast. I don't wanna, I wanna enjoy, relax and enjoy after the fruit of our labor. I'm just glad to be this sitting down. This is the down. fruit of our labor. Oh, you remember today. It, week by week, we said this last week, but you can really tell it today that the garden is winding down. Can't you? Yep. We didn't pull out much stuff, but the stuff we did made it made that little part look better anyway. It's all looking raggedy around the edges, rusty around the edges. And we've had so much rain this week. How much rain do you think we've had? I don't know, a bunch. It's washed the driveway out twice. A lot. This morning, well, we were at Ingalls and grocery store, and a gentleman asked us if we had enough rain, if we thought it was going to rain. I said probably, which it did soon after that. But he said that we were 28. Is that what he said? I didn't hear him. He, he said, said 28 or 23 inches above the typical rainfall. Now I don't know, but that's just what he was saying. He was saying it was rained so much he couldn't mow his yards. What he was talking about, but. I don't it's, doubt it. We get a lot of moisture, but it's rained a lot in the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, big heavy rains, thunderstorms, some wind, frog stranglers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Once the washing the ditch, ditch washer or something. What about it? Rains so much it log floater or something like that. Yeah, something like that. A little know. Noah. That's what Ken Roper would say. It come a little Noah. <laughs> yeah. And it did pour before we got back home. It looks like it's about to do it again. I'm having a hard time with this and I ate way too much lunch. Yeah, I may have ate way too much. Way too much. I did it at supper last night too. Way, way too much. Mm -hmm. You can kind of tell on today that there's like a change coming. Oh yeah. You can tell. It's hot and humid and moist and rainy and sunny, but it's, everything's looking different. Yeah. And it's yeah, early yet the still, but... Trees are not as green as they were last week. I'm kind of looking faded. Mm-hmm. What do you think? That's good, though. That's the beginning of my favorite time. Yeah. It's a time for lots of people thinking about school. It's been a long time since we had to worry about people going back to school, but you still hear other people talking about it and course see the sales back to school sales and read about it in the paper what this school's doing or this open house or whatever it's been a long time since we had to worry about that yeah thank goodness Corey and Katie look really young but they're that's deceiving they're older I met a really sweet lady this week and Corey was with me and she wanted to know what grade Corey was in <laughs> yeah I said, well, she's a lot older than what she looks like. She said, well, she's in high school, ain't she? And I said, no. She's been out of high school a long time. I said, she's been out of college a long time. Mm -hmm. She said, oh, my, I thought she was just in high school. I said, no, she's older than she looks. It is an exciting time of the year, though, for people. I, I remember I would always get excited about you know, new new school books, a new teacher, new if I got a pair of tennis shoes and clothes and stuff. Matt did not, I know. What's wrong with you? He didn't like school at all. Yes. I, it wasn't that I, I wasn't obsessed, like loved it, loved it, but I there was parts of it I really liked. And I was I just was happy to go, I guess. But if you'd give me a choice I'd probably said I want to stay home. But Matt would have never darkened the door of the schoolhouse. I got a so, I don't know, just a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach as it approached, knowing it was coming, I couldn't do anything about it. I just despised it. And it wasn't so much the school, it was the 
being confined. Yeah, I just couldn't, and I just couldn't stand it. Mm. Corey and Katie was more like Matt, so it's always a struggle. I sat there and looked out the window all day. Yeah, they did okay in school. They wasn't the top of the class or anything like that because they pretty much didn't care. <laughs> But doing homework with them was like the nightmare, wasn't it? Oh, it was terrible. Trying to get them to. When I was in school, I didn't want nobody to help me with my homework because I figured they'd mess it up. I better do it so it'd be right. You know, I didn't ask for help from mom or daddy. But I think Matt ended up going to summer school a lot because he, you could never learn to just do the work the first time. Yeah, I just wouldn't do it. Wouldn't show up, lay out, skip class, and. Ended up having to go to summer school. It wasn't that I wasn't smart. It was just mm -hmm. I didn't go and didn't do the work. Yeah, you just didn't apply yourself. Whereas now, you've got the exact opposite uh, attitude. Something that I hate and something I just can't stand to do, I just jump in our full bore and go ahead and do it and get it over with. And if I'd have applied that principle back then, it would have been a whole lot easier. Yeah. I just, I don't know, just immature, I guess. It ain't much better now. The uh, Western Carolina University has a great resource, a digital collection, and I'll, I write about it. I use their pictures and write about them often on the Blind Pig and the Acorn. I'll link to the one I'm going to talk about that I used this week. If you read the Blind Pig, you already know it was about school, thinking about school. So if you go there, you just look. If you like old photos, you can just look through. And it's not just photos, it's other things too. But you can just look and look and look at different things. It's just amazing. But I love the old photos. I especially love the ones, um, of course, I would love my families and Matt's families the most. But I love the ones from my area because I always think, hmm, those people likely knew somebody in my family. You know, somewhere you could have connected each other, somewhere down the, down the road. Anyway, I shared three of them. This week, I don't know if you did. You see that, Matt? Uh, no, I don't think I did. So one of them was at Hewitt. That's in Bryson. Was in Bryce City. These are old school fo school photos. One of them was in Jackson County, and then one of them was at Sweetwater. So just up the road from us. The first one, they didn't. They don't know exactly what date it was. <coughs> Next one, the one at Hewitt, I think that was the one that was like 1910, they estimate. And then the one at Sweetwater was later, but still like maybe 1920, 1930, something like that. It's just so amazing to look at those old pictures, though, and look at the kids and look at their expressions and their dress, what they've got on. Really interesting. It makes me wish I knew the story about each one of them. But the site is really neat because you can click on the photo and it will, you can just enlarge it to its largest, as if you have a, you know, if you're on a desktop or something to that big. And, and you can even enlarge it more than that if you want to really get close at some of the details and look at them. And the one, I think it's the one from Hewitt, it was actually took by a photographer. They know who took it. And it was, I mean, like a more of a professional photographer. It is so clear. It is so neat. It's just like you could reach out and touch some of those little kids. They're so cute. Oh, my goodness. But I was, like, trying to see. I wonder if they look alike, this one and that one. I wonder if they're siblings. And um, the first one that, they, that I shared that they didn't know exactly when it was made, they look like pretty well-to-do kids. They're pretty, looks pretty fancy clothes to me. But there's like in the front row, there's three little girls kind of stair steps and they've all got on. It's kind of a unique pattern that shows up in the black and white photo. And I wonder, are they siblings or are they cousins? Because somebody made those dresses, I bet. I mean, they all come from the same place, the dresses. Anyway, really interesting to look at those and, and wonder about them. The one from closer to me and Matt, Sweetwater, between here and Hayesville, it was uh, took by Gid Laney. So he was a photographer from Brasstown. And in it, it's more like what I, the pictures I would see from Matt's family and my family when, you know, old photos with the boys in overalls and the girls kind of in plain cotton dresses. They're not nearly as well dressed as the first two photos, but they're all amazing. I really love those old ones like that. And that's such a great resource. If you're from Western North Carolina, you might find somebody, you know, your family 
and even if you just like to look at them, you can you can go look at them. That one from Sweetwater, I loved it though because I really looked at all of them thinking now somebody somehow there was a connection between whoever and somebody in my family since we're from here you know there's some kind of connection if you could just go back in time and figure it out and all of that one there's a little girl one little girl that had a hat on so that's cute I wonder why whose hat and why she got the hat on and you know and she had a necklace on and then two of the little boys uh, kneeling down in the front of the overalls they had their arm I mean their like this their hand on the next the boy beside them on their shoulder I thought that was awful sweet too cute I like to look at any old photos they don't have to be school I mean just any old black and white photo from way back in the past just because it's I mean number one it's a different time I mean you try to figure out what those people were doing and yeah uh, I always try to look and see what's laying around in the background of the photos and how that relates mm -hmm. to you know their surroundings and what's going on it's like a it's like reading a book yeah i mean yeah. you can guess at it you can't you can't you can't never for sure know but yeah you can take what you do know and try to figure out and try to figure out yeah and i just that, to me that's fascinating oh yeah it's i love to like you said look at them and the the one from um i think it was the one from the hewitt the one that's so clear you can really see i mean they're just it's just such a clear photo it's amazing mm -hmm. But that you can tell the dress, and one of my commenters, Ron Stevens, he noticed like the dress between the little boys. The little, sorry, my phone's ringing there. But you can tell the um, the difference in the dress between the wee little boys and then kind of the middle size, and then the older boys. You can they're dressed different, mm -hmm. and so then that makes you think that was the different styles. You know, there's no overalls in that one. They're they're much look much more well to do. Um, maybe that was just the style, though, since those were different time periods. Maybe that was before overalls were really common or popular or, or whatever. But the little littlest boys, the wee little ones, a lot of them in that picture are barefooted. They've got the really nice clothes, but they're barefooted. But they've got these really flouncy collars and on their shirts that come all the way out to their shoulders, which is interesting. Again, just a different style of that day. And then the older ones just have a have a tie you know more of a look more like the actual one of the teeth there's a man and a woman teacher I'm assuming teachers in that one and they look more like hit their dress like him but yeah I love to look at their <coughs> hairstyles and their yeah the ones that are you know those that are in the two photos that seem like they're nicer dressed are they really did they just dress up for that one day did they dress like that all the time you know you look, look yeah. back at our school pictures and there's a world difference oh, between goodness, yeah. what we wore and how we dressed and our hair and, and yeah. now. Hairstyles. Yeah, yeah, it's a crazy difference. Yeah. And I don't even know, do they take school pictures today? I mean, that kind, mm -hmm. like a... I remember at Martins Creek, they would, I have several of them, they would take us outside, there wasn't many of us, but each grade, like the eighth grade picture or seventh grade picture, or whatever, I have some of them. I think you've got some too. Yeah. You, yeah, I've seen them. I mean, like your whole class, in other words, your whole grade, like that. Matt's were much, it was a much bigger school, so there's way more kids in yours. There might have been like 10 or 12 in mine at Martins Creek, but much smaller. But yeah, you look back at those and you can see the different hairstyles and the dress, the way we're, I mean, we've got jeans and stuff on, wasn't wearing dresses, most people wasn't, but still just different, different styles, interesting. Maybe someday somebody will be, be recording some of ours like that, you think? <laughs> yeah, I doubt it. Yeah, like I'm looking back at those with like this romantic view of yeah. the kids and wishing I knew all their stories and trying to figure out who looks alike, if they're siblings or cousins or... You know, might be related, and so might be looking at mine and say, "He dressed that moron." Yeah, they? yeah. And um, one of them too, the same like with the little boys. They're just, I mean, they're the same age, and they've got their shoulder, their hands on each other's shoulders. But so on one of those others, the littlest girls in the front, the older girls right behind them have their hands. Several of them have their hands on those little girls' shoulders. I just think that's so sweet. When I went to school. At Martins Creek, which is still like that. It's a pre-K through eighth grade now. 
but there's really something great about that if it's a small school about being the older kids being with the younger ones mm -hmm. you know I mean you're not in class together and you're not playing together on the playground but just being able to see each other and mm -hmm. um, if your whole family comes up through that that was always nice people when I come through their class at Marsh Creek they would know because they'd already had Steve so mm -hmm. they'd already they'd be like I know what family you come from mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, so I think there's something nice about that. Oh, yeah. A family makes it like a family. When I was real little at Martins Creek and Steve's, like Steve's class, and, and even older than that, I can remember them, and they seemed like grown-ups. Yeah. They were like, I was like, they're so big. They're so grown-up. They were just like <clears throat> grown-ups coming to school. Of course, when I got to be their age and was in that class, I didn't feel like that then. Mm. I was like, I'm just a kid. And they wasn't nothing but young and Yeah, still. they wasn't nothing but young and too, but... It seemed like they seemed so big and so adult-like. Mm -hmm. Steve was always adult-like, though, my older brother Steve. It was like he was always the adult, and me and Paul was the little little youngins that wouldn't behave or wouldn't be quiet, disturbed him. And mischievous. Just, yeah, just more mischievous, and Steve was always adult-like, which is a good trait. He's a, he's yeah. a good brother, yeah. very responsible and all that. I mean, Paul is too, but at the time, it was like Steve was like the adult, and me and Paul was like the annoying little kids. There's some nice little wind. Feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, it feels good to get some of the fall stuff planted. Do you think the deer will eat it this year? I don't know. I hope not. By the time it's up and going, I'm thinking hopefully the... Maybe there'll be an acorn or two on the ground, and yeah. they won't be fooling with that. Once mm -hmm. acorns fall, they're pretty well happy. Well, they're just genetically wired to eat those over everything else, so yeah. maybe they won't have that on their mind. It is miraculous. I'm so thankful. The year we've had has not been that great this summer, but we've had no deer. I told you back when we was going wild back in the spring, we had never had it happen yet. I so. know, but that one time, I was just like, it's over now. It's just terrible. They found their oasis. They'll just be bad, <coughs> but they've not been, thank goodness. The deer's been around here for years, and I they've know. never bought their summer garden one time. No, I know, they've not. So you stress me out all for nothing? <laughs> well, I stress myself out for nothing. Well, that's all right for you to stress you yeah. out, but just don't stress me. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind them being around as long as they stay out of my yard. You do a whole lot of getting in the garden, they'll get to take a ride in a pressure pot. Yeah. I ain't going to put up with a whole lot of that. This time of the year, though, when things start... I don't want them to come eat it even now, but because I don't want them to get used to being in the garden or anything like that. But when things start looking like this, then I'm kind of like mad. I'm longing for Jack Frost to come and mm -hmm. big, big heavy frost to just waste it all. <laughs> yeah. Put it back like it was. Put it all to bed. Well, you know what? We'll be here in the woods, blittering around him. Yeah, seeing wood, wood smoke. It's your favorite time, ain't it? It is. Yeah, we need to be stacking wood. Where? I don't know. On top of the house? Yeah. Need a woodshed. Yeah, we do need a woodshed. <clears throat> maybe now. Add it to your list. Have a little time maybe to build on now. Yeah, I hope so. If you will fucking get done doing other things. Yeah. I just can't believe how our Tommy Toes have done this year. It's ridiculous. I mean, it's crazy. We can't even you keep can't, them picked. You can't eat that many it, Tommy Toes. I mean, I know. I mean, no. They're so small, you can't even get all of them to can. No. I mean, we have canned some. We've yeah. been canning tomatoes all along a little bit at a time. But, but yeah, it's just um, it's unbelievable how good they've done this year. It sure is. It's good though. I've eaten a whole bunch of them in the yard. Mm -hmm. We've eaten them a lot, and I've shared them with people, and we've eaten them. And, and now they are still hanging. Still full. hanging full. We picked two gallons today, yeah. so yeah. You can't even tell we've been in them. No, yeah. 
Matt's picking his Cherokee purples and noticed that he thought there wasn't that many left, but then he found some hidden in the Malabar spinach, so he's excited about that. Yeah, I picked one and went straight in there and ate lunch, yeah. too. He did for lunch, and it was really, really good. It's about to come to an end, though. Yeah. You could open a jar we've canned and just like pour that on some bread and try that. Yeah, we'll get <laughs> Wouldn't be, would it? Yeah. I could get some mayonnaise and pepper and put it on a piece of bread and then just drink it from the jar. Yeah, I like take a bite and then take a drink yeah. and take a bite and yeah. take a drink. I like tomato juice. I do too. I didn't know that until I was an adult, but yeah, I, I was too picky to try it when I was young. Ain't much I don't like. Somebody was asking that, what does Matt not like? He doesn't like radishes. Yeah, I can't eat radishes. And it seemed like there was something else. I told him radishes and something else. Like horseradish, like That's horseradish flavor, or even horseradish, yeah. Matt don't like that. The list is really small. Oh, yeah, it is. I think that was the only two I could think of was radishes and horseradish. I'll just about eat anything else. Yeah. Even coconut, even though it reminds him of toenails. I used to wouldn't eat it, coconut at all, back years ago, but I do now. I kind of like it. Mm -hmm. But it's the, the consistency of it. It's still, I still stand by the toenail statement. You tasted Kim's? coconut cake years ago and that changed your mind. And it was good, yeah. She makes, my sister-in-law Kim makes a really good coconut cake. She said she'd let me video her doing it. I need to need to do that. Yeah, yeah her coconut cake's real good. I always liked, uh, of course I liked, I've never had a coconut cake I didn't like, but I liked Granny's when she used to make them a lot, especially before Pap died. He loved them. That was one of his favorite cakes. He loved Kim's too, but Granny would make it like just a Kim's usually does hers in a, what is that, 13 by 9 or something. Mm -hmm. But Granny would just do a layer cake, and in between the layers of the coconut and the white icing, she put black walnuts, just lay them out, lay them in the, between the layers. Mm, that's just so good. If you like black walnuts, I love black walnuts. I can eat them a little bit, I ain't crazy about them. I love them. I like English walnuts a whole lot. I like them okay, but I'd rather have a black walnut. It's just weird to me. It's kind of... But it does have a very strong flavor. Well, it's kind of bitter. Yeah. Wangy. Yeah, it's like... Just, just, I don't know. It's just not good. <laughs> it's just not good. I mean, I can eat it, but I just think crazy about it. not like, like me. A, I could eat them out of the hand. Just yeah. eat them straight out. Just eat put salt on them and eat them like that. It's like they've been steeped in a gym sock <laughs> to me. I mean, they do. No, I do. They do have a funny taste. You're either a fan or you're not. That's one of those things. I love them. <clears throat> I can't remember. Maybe it would have been, I guess it would have had to have been Lucky or James. Granny's younger brothers, uh, when Granny Gazzy was pregnant with them, maybe it was Lucky, she told me that she would, she had a hard time, you know, when you're pregnant trying to figure out what you can eat, but she loved black walnut, so she'd just sit out there and crack the walnut and eat the, eat the meat. Yeah. I bet her fingers got black doing yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Because they will sting you and they'll oh, stay yeah. with you for a while. Yeah. Granny used to, even when I was growing up, though, she'd like that for a snack if she got some out and then she'd put some salt on it and then eat them like that. I just love them. So let's see, we could add black walnuts, radishes, and horseradish. That's all you're, you don't like. I don't know why I don't like hot stuff. Like Matt gave me a pepper over there. He said, this is really sweet. Here, taste this. It's really good. So I ate it and it had a good flavor, but it set me on fire. I was like, that is hot. He said, that is not hot. I said, it is. So anyway, he cut him another piece, and it was then. It must have just been the very tip wasn't hot, but then as you went up. The very, the very the bottom half inch of it was sweet and was not a bit hot. And after I'd get her, cut her a piece, I must have got into the warm, and then I cut a piece above that, and it was hot. It was hot. I liked it, but it was hot. Yeah, but Matt liked it. See, I don't like hot like that, but I do like like the spiciness of horseradish or radishes, that kind of, just a different. Yeah, I don't, like I don't know. Stuff. But I don't like hot peppers. 
Like a yeah. Saturn saddle blanket or something. <laughs> I don't like that. Saddle blanket. That's what it tastes like. I mean, it's just nice. a, a, a unpleasant taste to me. I don't like that stuff. But I'll eat just about anything else. Yeah. What was the commercial that Mikey eat it? Yeah. Give to Mikey, he eat anything. He'll eat anything. That's, uh, that's almost me. Almost. Maddie and Mikey. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of this food, what are you going to make me for supper? I'll make you a hamburger. Or am I making supper? Hamburger. That's what I was going to make, unless you want to make it. Sounds good to me. I've got to cook. Food for your uh, daughter. Yeah, Katie's conned Matt into cooking her something on the Blackstone, I think. While we are, me and Matt, I've always pretty much, well, maybe not in the beginning, but for many, many years, we've always grown a fall garden. Even if it's, and it's nothing big, it never is anything big, but kale and mustard greens and turnips and usually some radishes. And then we've tried different things like rutabagas, we've never grown them. Um, I, th I don't know if we've tried beets or not. We use them, Sometimes we'd plant some lettuce and then sometimes not. We tried cabbage last year and we won't do that this year. We sh we, I think if you do cabbage, I would need to start them inside. And so that was, I just direct sowed them last year and that didn't work for us. Anyway, so, but we've grown one for what? 10 years or something like that? Or more. Or more. And it's really nice to just have a little bit of green stuff to eat yeah. during the winter, you know, yeah. whether it's mustard greens or a turnip or the radishes, per, you, they don't last because they, Matt don't like them, <laughs> but they grow and then they're, you know, you eat them and they're gone. But usually the kale and the mustard greens and the turnips, we'll, we'll eat on them a little, but if they continue to grow, they might last till February, mm -hmm. you know, till we're, till we're starting to think about the next spring's garden often we've had to pull up, pull up fall stuff, stuff to, to make room for the spring stuff yeah. so so we've always done that i mean pretty much most of the time we've been gardening but pap and granny never not one time planted a fall garden that i can remember they never did i don't know, I don't know. they just never did maybe they was wore out or maybe it just wasn't something they i don't know they just never did Never did plant one that I can remember, unless I'm forgetting, but I don't think so. If they did, it would have just been once or twice, but I, I don't remember them ever planting anything. I think it was, I guess, just a time to rest and relax, or I don't know. I mean, they love turnips, but they never really planted turnips much that I remember. And if they did, it would have been a, as the summer, you know, as a spring crop. Uh, Granny's always excited when we take her some, though. Oh, yeah. Take her some of ours, but. Yeah, they just didn't, never did plant them. And I would guess that, I don't remember Papa and Mama doing it either, so I would guess that that was probably a big reason why is that their parents or, you know, aunts and uncles or whoever, that they didn't plant a fall garden either. It is nice though to have something fresh and green. We grow those Egyptian onions and they usually will overwinter, so that's another thing. And I don't, I think I told you, I don't know if I did or not, that I moved some to one of the beds up here. Yeah, well it's, when I put them up there, they were about that big and now they're about that big, so they're gonna live. But if they get started in there, then they'd kind of be contained. Cause you know where we have them down here, it's like the winter squash is there, the blueberries, the yo, um, I sort of say the yogurt, the garlic, and they kind of get lost in the mix of everything. Mm -hmm. It's just a bird again, cardinal. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's nice to have a little bite of something fresh in the winter time. I mean, we put up so much food. We usually are eating green beans or tomatoes or whatever it is, or Matt's, you know, the meat he harvests, but to have something fresh and green is nice too. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Something to go out and pull up out of the ground to add to it is mighty, mighty good. Yeah. Water time. Yeah, I'm thirsty. There's a deer. Is it? Yeah. Oh, I see its tail. It's going to turn going up the bank. 
see it? I see it walking. It was coming to your garden. I know. I, can I run after it and scream? Okay, crazy. I just come down off of there this morning. Right about right there. Um, can I scream? No. Matt don't want me to scream because of his... It's so going up I the hill. I see it, there. yeah. Hunting. It's a big old doe. Mm -hmm. Is she by herself? I don't know. Last night we went to town and um, when we come back home we seen like how many deer? Eight, ten. Yeah, it's okay. like even along the busy highways they were feeding. I guess that gets you excited, huh? Yeah, I just get mesmerized and can't do nothing else. Yeah. I guess I need to quit that to get back yeah. and finish this one out. It'll be nice. It'll be, I mean, it's pretty close. It won't be no time. You'll be hunting. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to it. Yeah. That just whets your appetite, huh? Yes, it does. I do enjoy it. It's a good, good, good food. It is. Rocket fuel. It's so like good. Yeah, so good the way we can it, but also the way Matt fixes it. It's just good. I mean, the way if he we freeze it and then any of the ways he, he cooks it, he usually cooks the deer meat for us, but um, it's good either way, whether it's a roast, it's been froze, or if it's that wonderful canned deer meat that's so tender and so flavorful. It's really good. Yeah, it is. Mighty good for you. Mm -hmm. Unmolested food. Organic? Yep. Natural? Mm -hmm. All the things? Yep. Well, we appreciate you stopping by to visit with us today as we kind of work on winding down the garden. That'll continue for the next few weeks and and then, you know, being excited about the fall garden. Hopefully those things will come up and may take them a while, but hopefully they will. and. Hopefully they'll flourish and hopefully the deer will not eat them this year like they did last year. And we'll be able to enjoy them all winter long. Mm -hmm. Thank you for stopping by to help us celebrate Appalachia. Mm -hmm. You want to take off running up there now? Mm-hmm. Could have blistered that one from right here. Yeah. I see her tail flagging. She went out that way and then she turned and come back and then turned up. Mm -hmm. And it, she ain't far under the top right there. <clears throat> Enjoy your freedom because it's coming to a close. Yeah. I'll soon be confined to a uh, ball nice. cannon jar ball shortly. Ball cannon jar. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we, I know, I know. we made a pretty good lick, didn't we? Yeah. Got some stuff cleaned out and some stuff started. Mm -hmm. Now the blue sky's back. Thought it was going to rain. Yes, I am. I've been tired for days. You've been working hard. Yeah. Are y'all going fishing tomorrow? I don't know. I ain't heard from Big Dan. Big Dan. I think it's supposed to be nice. Yeah, I think it is. It just I thought about just whether he calls or goes or not. Just getting up and going up there about daylight and going at it. Yeah, you and Katie could go. Take some take a lunch and some bait and some poles and yeah just enjoy it go up there and see if we can get us a couple of limits and bring them back i was thinking i was going to can beans but we don't have no beans to can 
not nothing right? mm -hmm. so what are you going to do? I need to tear apart our room and clean it and put it back together that's what I need to do I'm just getting to the point you can't even walk through it I'd be glad if I do it. Yeah. yeah, behind those grow bags, something is dug under the greenhouse. It's fresh, red clay dirt. I'm it in that. And then they chewed into the plastic. Let me wrap. The nasturtiums on this side didn't do as good. I mean, they're pretty, but they're not as pretty as those on that side. They just go crazy right into your way before you walk in yeah. and all that. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing how much it's changed since last week when we were sitting here. Yeah. It's like a, it's not vibrant green anymore. It's kind of dull. Yeah, you can out. see right in there, there's a little bit of color, color change right yeah. there. That's a dogwood, ain't it? And it's real, real early, but yeah. it, it's got a little color to it. As you can tell, the, it's just a different... I think I even said that last week. Everything's still really green, yeah, it's, but now it's, it's getting not. a little duller. Yeah. Spe look at the this little birch tree, mm -hmm. especially tell it knit and that, whatever that is. Yep. And that dogwood. A month from now, We'll begin to have some cooler nights. Yeah. Not cold, but cooler. <clears throat> I can't wait. Because can you believe that today's like August 11th, ain't it? Yeah. I mean, it's basically half of August is over. Yeah. Sure went by in a hurry. Oh, goodness, it just flew by. I don't even know where it went. I'm not even sure I lived it. <laughs> That's what it feels like. It just went by so crazy. Apparently you did. Yeah, apparently I did, but. Yeah. What do they say? I got the t-shirt to prove it or something? Yeah. Something, something like that. that, I don't know. I need you to make something in the smoker. What's I'll look over there and see it, I don't know. Something, we need to do that. It's, gosh, it's been forever since I've used it. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I'm not to put something in it. Something. Build a big hot fire in it and get some good coals going. The only reason I don't use it more is I need to come up with a better lid system. Yeah. I mean, it needs to be covered. What is that tin off of Paul's roof? Yeah, I think <laughs> so. But it, the tin old. works, but yeah. you need to cover it with dirt to insulate it, and I don't. You I'm never prepared to, to have to start digging the I yard know, up. You I know. know. Yeah, you don't want to have to just dig a giant hole. I don't know if you need sand or what. The sand would be cool. I don't know how well it insulate. I guess it uh, will. I don't know. Put like a blanket and then put sand. Mm. I don't know. Remember that, what was that thing that we did with Travis, the log thing. Yeah, Swedish torch. Yeah, that worked good. I mean, that's yeah. a different thing, I know, but that's a pretty cool mm -hmm. thing to do. Yep. Maybe next spring we can go back ramp, ramp digging. Yeah, that, doing it that way makes, makes it the efficient where you can cook a whole meal with one stick of wood. Right, yeah, yeah that was neat. Yep. I haven't done that since then. I know, that's been like Two years. two years. Yeah. Two years in the spring. Mm -hmm. We're just busy. Yeah. Too time. busy for our own good. Time just gets away from you. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, you'll have to take your Geritol in liquid form because <laughs> you won't be able to swallow it. Yeah, probably. 
I won't. Y'all need you to remind me. And you'll have to unlock your wheels to go to the kitchen. <laughs> Probably. If I could do Katie's voice, she does. I'd do that. Nancy. Yeah. <laughs> she came up with that. I don't know. She's crazy. All, All right, right. We gotta go. I'm All busy. Right, let's go. No.